the U.S. Supreme Court shakes America with landmark rulings on abortion and guns. Plus, the investigation of the attack on the U.S. Capitol gets closer to former President Trump. From Voice of America, this is the Inside Story, Democracy in America. Gibson, VOA's congressional correspondent. Over the last several weeks, it seems no other news beat in America has been busier with important developments about democracy in the United States than covering Capitol Hill. Through the month of June, a special committee from the House of Representatives presented eye-opening findings from its investigation into the attack on the U.S. Capitol on January 6, 2021. And as Congress agreed to the first nationwide gun safety law in 30 years, the Supreme Court overturned its 1973 ruling that guaranteed women across the country the right to get an abortion. So let's start there with the contentious issue of abortion. The justice's decision and the political impact of having the nine member Supreme Court take away a right from half the American population in the name of protecting the unborn. Our Laurel Bowman begins our coverage of the reversal of the landmark legal case Roe v. Wade. Anti-abortion advocates across the U.S. celebrate their win. The U.S. Supreme Court released its much-anticipated decision overturning Roe v. Wade, the 1973 landmark case that gave constitutional protection to women seeking abortions. We are here to help you if you are pregnant, if you are parenting, if you are in need of support. We're here to celebrate. We're so overjoyed with the decision of the court to overturn Roe v. Wade. It's something that we've been fighting for for decades. In a speech just after the announcement, Democratic President Joe Biden rallied his political base and tried to ease the fears of abortion rights advocates. He also called on Congress to enact a federal law codifying a woman's right to choose an abortion. It was three justices named by one president, Donald Trump, who were the core of today's decision to upend the scales of justice and eliminate a fundamental right for women in this country. With this decision, the conservative majority of the Supreme Court shows how extreme it is, how far removed they are from the majority of this country. The latest Gallup poll shows confidence in the court at a new low of 25%. In the six to three majority opinion, conservative Justice Samuel Alito, appointed by U.S. President George W. Bush, wrote, the Constitution makes no reference to abortion and no such right is implicitly protected by any constitutional provision, including the due process of the 14th Amendment. The case at issue concerned a Mississippi law banning abortions after 15 weeks. The state's sole abortion clinic sued and lower courts ruled in its favor. In today's opinion, the Supreme Court ultimately backed the state. Instead of the Supreme Court, states should decide whether to allow or ban abortion, the opinion said. We're about to enter sort of the Wild West uh, in terms of a lot of interjurisdictional uh, conflict. Um, there, are, there are about 13 states that have trigger bans um, and that will immediately have laws that take effect and that basically ban abortion outright. All in, about 26 states um, we can expect will uh, virtually eliminate abortion. This could force women to cross state lines to get abortions. That's Roughly 15 states are expected to try to protect abortion rights, with the rest of states taking some sort of middle ground. Abortion rights advocates see the ruling as an assault on reproductive and privacy rights. Well, as my sign says, I will aid in a bed abortion. We're not going to ha start. Ha we're not going to stop having abortions. We are going to fight by electing more women to Congress, to state legislatures, to the city council. Women who understand the issues. It will go to the front lines to pass legislation to overturn this horrible decision. But those against abortion say it's a victory for human life. I do want to fight for the rights of women. As an attorney, I am very concerned about this. But we also need to 
consider that these are people. These, I believe these are people and they have rights too. So we've got to kind of find, we have to find a way to honor women, but also uh, really protect the fundamental rights of these children. One of the most consequential Supreme Court decisions in recent U.S. history. <laughs> the overturning of Roe versus Wade, ending a constitutional right to abortion, and sending that decision back to each U.S. state immediately led to a call for action from President Joe Biden. We need to restore the protections of Roe as law of the land. We need to elect officials who will do that. This fall, Roe is on the ballot. Personal freedoms are on the ballot. For decades, disagreements over abortion rights have motivated Democrat and Republican voters at the ballot box. A promise to appoint pro-life Supreme Court justices was a key part of Donald Trump's 2016 White House win. I am putting pro-life justices on the court. I will say this, it will go back to the states. Trump nominated three Supreme Court justices in his time as president. They each promised lawmakers Roe versus Wade was settled law, but ended up becoming the key votes to overturn it. It has been reaffirmed many times over the past uh, 45 years. Now, with Roe overturned, will conservative voters still be motivated to head to the polls? House Republicans said there are more battles to fight at the state level. The work just begins now to go and protect life even more because the Supreme Court's decision overturning Roe v. Wade, correcting that flawed decision, finally allows states and Congress to protect life in ways that we never were able to for the last 50 years. And that motivates young conservative voters like Anna Lulis. It is super important to pushing pro-life legislation. What you're going to see with a post-Roe America is probably a polarization among the states. In a Monmouth University poll released last month, 48% of Democratic voters said candidates' positions on abortion rights is a key issue in the upcoming midterm elections. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer said he expects Republican lawmakers will try to put more restrictions on abortion. Elect more MAGA Republicans if you want nationwide abortion bans. Elect more MAGA Republicans if you want women and doctors to be prosecuted. And in the U.S. House, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi said it was crucial for Democrats to hang on to their majority. The Republicans are plotting a nationwide abortion ban. They cannot be allowed to have a majority in the Congress to do that, but that's their goal. It's still unclear how much the issue will energize voters. Outside the court, an abortion rights supporter doubted electing more Democrats would make a difference. In theory, Roe is on the ballot. In reality, it would require 60 uh, Democratic senators who are willing to actually take action on uh, packing the court, on ending the filibuster, on making sure that this is here to stay. A Politico morning consult poll conducted after the decision found that 40 percent of the American public strongly disapproved of overturning Roe. The decision to overturn the landmark case of Roe versus Wade is being both celebrated and criticized. Stephanie Robinson is a lecturer at Harvard University Law School and was a chief counsel for Senator Edward Kennedy. She spoke to our Arash Arab Asadi about the court's controversial decision. What's happening right now is that this minority rule by conservatives is happening in this court when we see that this is not where the majority of this country wants to go, nor is it where the majority of this country is. They're looking for cases to be able to overturn and to be able to put in place the agenda that is extraordinarily conservative um, for this country going forward. The Second Amendment of the United States Constitution reads, quote, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. That right to keep and bear arms and how it's been interpreted by the courts has been at the heart of the gun control debate in the United States for decades. From the political assassinations of the 1960s to the reoccurring mass shootings of this century. A mass shooting in May at an elementary school in Uvalde, Texas, 
killing 19 children and two teachers, was a catalyst in getting Congress to find compromise for a gun safety law that guarantees millions of dollars for mental health, school safety, crisis intervention programs, and juvenile background checks. It receives support from Democrats and Republicans. The gun industry wants to stop any discussion about changing the laws um, after these mass shootings because they know that that's the moment when the public is demanding policy change. It's literally sickening, sickening to consider the innocent young lives that were stolen by this pointless, senseless brutality. President Biden signed the bill into law, but that's not going to stop the debate over guns in America. The Supreme Court weighed in last week by saying New York's restrictions on who can carry a concealed gun is unconstitutional. Let's go back to Stephanie Robinson, Harvard University Law School lecturer. She talked to Oral Rosh Arabasadi about guns, the law, and the Second Amendment. We're at this incredibly rare moment in the United States where there's some bipartisanship for the most meager of gun regulations signed by the president, and then the Supreme Court puts that out. Like, like as if to say, doesn't matter. I mean, it, is the Supreme Court more right than Congress passing a bill? Well, the Supreme Court would say to you um, that that's not their job. I mean, that their job is not to do this. Their job is not to legislate. Their job is to, um, to interpret the law and, and, and make decisions and make rulings. Casting a shadow over the American political landscape for the past 18 months is the attack on the U.S. Capitol on January 6, 2021. A select committee of nine members of Congress has been investigating what happened and why. On June 9th, they began telling us what they discovered. With intense and previously unseen video, and in testimony from a documentary filmmaker and a U.S. Capitol police officer who suffered a traumatic brain injury. I saw friends with blood all over their faces. I was slipping in people's blood. Six Democratic and two Republican lawmakers made public for the first time their year-long investigation into the January 6, 2021 breach of the U.S. Capitol. It was domestic enemies of the Constitution who stormed the Capitol and occupied the Capitol, who sought to thwart the will of the people to stop the transfer of power. And so they did, so at the encouragement of the President of the United States. President Trump summoned the mob, assembled the mob, and lit the flame of this attack. You will also hear about plots to commit seditious conspiracy on January 6th, a crime defined in our laws as conspiring to overthrow, put down, or destroy by force the government of the United States. Investigators said that on election night 2020, the president insisted on declaring victory. This is a fraud on the American public. We were getting ready to win this election. Frankly, we did win this election. Despite warnings from his top campaign advisors, it was far too early to be making any calls like that. Um, ballots, ballots were still being counted. Ballots were still going to be counted for days. Um, and it was far too early to be making any proclamation like that. With the exception of a campaign lawyer, former New York City Mayor Rudy Giuliani, who witnesses said was drunk that night. Mayor Giuliani was saying, we want it. They're stealing it from us. Where'd all the votes come from? We need to go say that we won. And essentially that anyone who didn't agree with that position was being weak. Former Attorney General Bill Barr, the nation's top law enforcement official at the time of the 2020 election, 
testified the president had continued with false claims of fraud in the weeks after election night, even after it was clear he had lost. I was somewhat demoralized because I thought, boy, if he really believes this stuff, he has, you know, lost contact with, uh, with uh, he, he's become detached from reality if he really believes this stuff. You know, when I went into this and would you know, tell them how crazy some of these allegations were. There was never, there was never an indication of interest in what the actual facts were. Election officials from three key states and an election lawyer from the Republican Party also said the Trump campaign's subsequent attempts to prove fraud in court were unfounded. The simple fact is that the Trump campaign did not make its case. New details showing the danger to Vice President Mike Pence's life on January 6, 2021. Rioters just 40 feet away from Pence after he refused former President Donald Trump's baseless demand to overturn the 2020 election results. If Mike Pence does the right thing, we win the election. Pence's advisors described how Trump pushed conservative attorney John Eastman's false theory that a U.S. president can reject or delay election results. It made no sense to me that in all the protections that were built into the Constitution for a president to get elected and steps that had to be taken, that the power to choose the next president would be sitting at, with the vice president. Pence's advisors told the vice president he did not have that power and warned of the consequences. That declaration of Donald Trump as the next president would have plunged America into what I believe would have been tantamount to a revolution within a constitutional crisis. Despite the fact that the vice president consistently told the president that he did not have and would not want the power to decide the outcome of the presidential election, Donald Trump continued to pressure the vice president, both publicly and privately. Pressure that culminated in Trump's tweet on the afternoon of January 6, criticizing Pence, a move investigators say inflamed the president's supporters, encouraging them to storm the U.S. Capitol. The rioters just missed finding Pence, who insisted on remaining in the Capitol to certify the election for Joe Biden. I just want to find uh, 11,780 votes, which is one more than we have. In their fourth public hearing, investigators said Trump tried to change votes in several key states after he lost election challenges in U.S. courts. A handful of election officials in several key states stood between Donald Trump and the upending of American democracy. Trump has criticized the investigation, arguing that the committee's work is not fair or balanced, despite the presence of two Republicans, both of whom voted to impeach him. Arizona Speaker of the House Rusty Bowers, who voted for Trump in the election, testified the president pressured him to overturn the results through his lawyer, Rudy Giuliani. He said, we've got lots of theories, we just don't have the evidence. In Georgia, Trump alleged dead people and undocumented immigrants voted, and he pushed officials to change the results so that Joe Biden did not win. The numbers were the numbers, and we could not recalculate because we had made sure that we had checked every single allegation. And we had many investigations. The committee's investigators said Trump's lies had a human cost on election workers who faced death threats after he alleged they falsified ballots. We had them counted 18,000 voters uh, having to do with uh, Ruby Friedman. That's, uh, she's a vote scammer, a professional vote scammer and hustler. Do you know how it feels to have the president of the United States to target you? The president of the United States is supposed to represent every American, not to target one. Donald Trump didn't just want the Justice Department to investigate. He wanted the Justice Department to help legitimize his lies. 
to basically call the election corrupt. Two Republicans who voted to impeach Trump for his role in the riot took the lead, arguing the president knew he was pushing false claims. Donald Trump knew this was a lie. The Department of Justice had already informed the President of the United States repeatedly that its investigations had found no fraud sufficient to overturn the results of the 2020 election. Trump has criticized the investigation as unfair and most congressional Republicans say they view the results of the committee's investigation as illegitimate. But three Justice Department officials who served in the last days of the Trump administration testified to a sustained daily pressure campaign from the president. What I'm just asking you to do is just say it was corrupt and leave the rest to me and the Republican congressman. Do your job! Do your job! That pressure peaked three days before the Capitol attack when Trump confronted acting Attorney General Jeffrey Rosen threatening to replace him with Jeffrey Clark, a lower-ranking official who supported his fraudulent claims. The common theme being his dissatisfaction about what the Justice Department had done to uh, investigate election fraud. I will say that the Justice Department uh, declined all of those requests that I was just uh, referencing because we did not think that they were appropriate based on the facts. Testimony Tuesday revealed some of the most important details to date. As Cassidy Hutchinson, who worked just steps from the Oval Office, said Trump and his closest advisors, including her boss, White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows, knew of the potential for violence. Things might get real, real bad on January 6th. Bill Brown Cowboy, he's got blue jeans, Hutchinson telling lawmakers Trump was fully aware his supporters were armed and would be heading towards the Capitol. I overheard the president say something to the effect of, you know, I, I don't effing care that they have weapons. They're not here to hurt me. Take the effing mags away. Let my people in. They can march to the Capitol from here. Hutchinson, who risks criminal prosecution if she lies under oath, detailed Trump's desire to march on the Capitol with his supporters, even though a top White House lawyer warned it was likely illegal. Mr. Cipollone said something to the effect of, please make sure we don't go up to the Capitol, Cassidy. Keep in touch with me. We're going to get charged with every crime imaginable if we make that movement happen. An argument that culminated in Trump allegedly attempting to take the wheel of the presidential car and fighting his own Secret Service detail. The president said something to the effect of, I'm the effing president, take me up to the Capitol now. To which Bobby responded, sir, we have to go back to the West Wing. The president reached up towards the front of the vehicle to grab at the steering wheel. Well, more hearings are planned and more of the story will unfold, it is important to note that Congress has no power to prosecute any of those involved, including the former president. That task falls to the U.S. Justice Department. It's headed by Attorney General Merrick Garland, and he reports to President Biden. Which brings us back to Stephanie Robinson and the legal path forward for American democracy. They are really putting together a narrative that people can digest and that people can understand. And that piece is extraordinarily important. And they've done so based on what, they, what they're responsible for doing, I mean, to their constituency, um, to the American people, so that they can give them everything that they need to know and put it out there. And I think that that is really important and that's part of their job. But the other part of their job or part of what they're doing is a service to the legal community as well. Um, um, specifically to DOJ, is that they are laying this out for DOJ to be able to see what they are able to do, um, if anything. And I think that, you know, many are asking and interested as to whether or not this will go all of the way up to um, our former president and whether or not there'll be charges that'll be brought against him. That's all for now. Follow me on Twitter at KGYP, that's K-G-Y-P, for the latest on the January 6 hearings and everything else from Capitol Hill. And follow VOA News on Instagram and Facebook. Check voanews.com for up-to-date news and information. And check us out on our new free streaming service, VOA Plus. See you there next week for the Inside Story.